Welcome inside the RX Hustle Studios for another episode of Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. It is Back to the Future Day, officially in Back to the Future Part 2, when they went to the future, it was today, on October 21st, 2015. We kind of had the hoverboards, but not really. We kind of had the self-lacing shoes, but not really until perhaps tomorrow where I hear they're going to drop the new self-lacing shoes. I don't know. The Chicago Cubs are not going to win the World Series. My New York Mets are one game away from advancing to the World Series. So that picture is fading quickly. But one thing is for certain, and that is for the next 30 minutes, Dave Palumbo is going to answer your questions about diet, supplementation, training. And if you have any Bad to the Future questions, you can throw those in too as we now bring in Dave Palumbo. Before we do that, again, we remind you that on SpeciesNutrition.com, this month only, 44 serve isolized, 20% off. Of course, macadamia nut oil, buy one, get one free. And of course, for the best I hate this show, you get nitrolized by Species Nutrition. The best overall question gets macadamia nut oil, as we now do bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, happy Bad to the Future Day. McFly! McFly! Why cut back? It's Back to the Future Day here at rxmuscle.com. Live. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, it is Back to the Future Day, and I got, I got Stevie B here with me, and he uh, just wanted to join the, the fun. And, uh, you know, once again, I'm here to answer your questions, and uh, if you have questions about the future, I might even be able to answer those. <laughs> so one thing that we have learned about this show over the course of the last year, and, you know, just about a, what was it, a month, month and a half ago at the Olympia, we had many fans coming up to us telling us how much they enjoyed this show, how much they enjoy the fact that Dave is offering all this information for free. And we do this on a weekly basis. And we were getting a lot of fans from around the world telling us how much they enjoy watching our shows, watching our programming, our interviews, so on and so forth. We actually have one of those fans in studio today. So uh, uh, Terrence from the Netherlands, you want to pop in on uh, Dave's camera shot. Uh, Johnny, if we can get uh, Terrence. Terrence, you want to... Come on over here, Dennis, Terrence. Hi. <laughs> from the no Netherlands. <laughs> Netherlands. Now, you know, I, th I was going to congratulate you on being the, the guy who's the furthest away to come here, but I had a guy from Australia here, wow. and he took my guru course, and he's supposed to actually be here now, so there's a potential to have two people from around the world here. Wow. So, uh, great. Uh, how long are you here for? Uh, I'm here for uh, one week. Okay, so yeah. that's... Uh, now, you didn't get mugged in Manhattan, did you? No, no. My other friend from Australia did. Yeah, wow, okay. he, he got robbed. He okay. didn't get mugged, actually. But wow! So st stay out of uh, CD places. I will. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been watching? Uh, you know, RX Muscle well, coverage for? Uh, for about uh, three years. Wow. It's not that long, but uh, yeah, I, I really uh, like the show. Which show do you like the best? Uh, well, I always listen to uh, the radio. The, uh, Heavy Muscle Radio. Muscle Radio. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Who's better, John, me, or Chris Asita? Uh, <laughs> Remember who you're sitting next to. Yeah, uh, well, then it's uh, you, Dave. <laughs> you. Good answer. See, he's a smart guy too. So, well, you know, it's it's great when we see people who come from out of. You know, it's funny. The guru class I gave this past Saturday, uh, the secrets of becoming a diet guru. I had 14 people in the class, and every single one of them was from out of New York State, and I think three people were from out of the country. So. Uh, I guess uh, we're pretty much listened to all over the place. It's nice to know that I don't just affect one small area, but a very large global population. Now let's get to your questions. Again, if you want to join in, you can join us on the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com or on our social media platforms on our official Facebook page. You can tweet your questions using hashtag AskDave on our in Instagram page, official underscore rxmuscle, or if you're watching directly on the livestream.com page, you can comment, you can chime in with your questions on the chat box below or on the side. As we go to the Muscle Central Forum, if you're not already a member, it is free to register. We go to Johnny Sock Zero. Love the name. I hate this show more than watching last week's Iron Debate being Dennis James while Bader put up put on camera some Western Union money transfer for him specify Oh wow. <laughs> harsh, harsh, harsh. Dave, what is your take on Aromasin at 25 mg EOD for my off-season gear, and what other anti would you rather prefer or why? Now, the second point 
is second question is do you know or have any feedback on PSA leaves at 3.3 in parentheses ranges from zero to four above four is considered high I have ran gear almost all last year they are not out of range just slightly elevated but for the age is unusual under 30 years old any advice or suggestions okay first of all as far as aromatase inhibitors there's three of them out there that's pretty well known aromasin one of the ones he mentioned at 25 milligrams every other day is is, is adequate um, Arimidex at a half a milligram to a milligram every other day is, is more than adequate. And Femara at 2.5 milligrams every other day is, is, is more than adequate. So all three of them are pretty much comparable, and I think you can use either one. As far as PSA levels, which is prostate-specific antigen, that's a, a measure of your prostate health, essentially. As long as you're in the normal range, some people will go a little higher, some people run a little lower. Uh, you have nothing to worry about. So you're normal. I wouldn't worry about it. Don't, you don't really get this. You don't need to get too crazy about PSA levels. Um, if they're super high or they're uh, out of range, that's a different story. Then you want to investigate. It could be, you know, something as as harmless as an infection of your prostate. It could be something as serious as prostate cancer. But you're not in any danger whatsoever being in the normal range. Let's go to actually before we go to our next question. I want to remind you all next Wednesday special episode of Live with Wednesday. At noon, we are going to be joined by the legend himself, Lee Haney, eight-time Mr. Olympia. He's going to be live with on RxMuscle.com. As we go to Travis and BB Forever, I hate this show so much, I would rather get stuck talking to, Ty- to Kai Green while attempting to leave the house to watch my first child be born than watch the show. <laughs> Dear Dave, what would be some adequate replacements for squatting and still having complete leg development in mind? And would a combination of exercises make up for not being able to squat from multiple hip injuries? Yeah, it, it's hard to replace squats because there's such a universal, you know, movement. And they really give the most complete development to the legs, you know, from quads to adductors, which are inner thighs, to glutes, to hamstrings, to uh, abductors, or the outer part of your legs. So it's really hard to replace that. Now, obviously, Smith machine squats would probably be the next best thing because you're still doing the squatting movement. You're just not stabilizing the weight as much, so you're not going to get as complete a development, but you can still get some good muscle, you know, uh, put on there. I mean, Dorian Yates was had some hip issues in his career, and he he did. I don't think he ever did free weight squats. He did mostly Smith machine squats. So I think that would be probably the the best replacement. I don't see leg pressing ever replacing squats, and um, you know that's just the way it is. You know, free weight movements are always better. Once again, Smith machine probably the best. The power squat machine is good, but I still think it it, it does too much for you. Once the machine takes over too much of the movement, you're not going to get the development you're looking for. Let's go to PTB, still in the Muscle Central Forum on rxmuscle.com. Dave, what's your take on low-intensity, steady-state cardio versus high-intensity interval training, HIIT, cardio for fat loss or cardiovascular conditioning? Is HIIT for 15 to 20 minutes as if, if not more, effective than low-intensity, steady-state for 45 minutes to an hour, as many HIIT advocates claim, or will you burn too much muscle from it? You know... I've answered this question innumerable times. And, you know, people come up to me in the gym, they're like, you get, you get sick of the, getting the same question over and over. I'm like, no, because you know what? If I'm getting the same question over and over, a lot of people are, are still confused about it or may not know the answer to it. So I'm happy to repeat myself. But high intensity, you got to remember, what's your goal in doing the cardio? Is it to burn fat or is it to get your heart in shape? If it's to burn fat or maximize fat burning, then low intensity, longer duration is the best way to go because you're ensuring that all the calories that you're burning Burning are fat calories. Once your intensity level gets over a certain you know amount, you know, and every person is different. Let's take a benchmark, uh, 135 beats per minute. Okay. Once your heart gets over that level, you're going to start burning carbs as fuel. Okay. Now you might be expending more calories doing high intensity cardio, but if the calories you're expending are carbohydrate calories, okay then you're really not burning stored body fat. Now, there might be an afterburn effect or there might be, you know, maybe you're you're burning, you know, 85% carbs and 20 and, you know, 15% fat. But the bottom line is that you're not maximizing your fat burning. Plus, if you're doing high intensity cardio on a low carb diet, okay, and there is no carbohydrate intake to really feed the cardio, then your body's going to use protein and turn that into glucose so that it can use for fuel, which is, can risk, you can risk losing muscle, 
uh, you can, you're going to be using up the protein you're eating for fuel, which is not good. Obviously, it's not going to be available to repair muscle. And to me, as a physique athlete, that's not the goal. The goal is to burn fat. Low intensity, okay, longer duration, way more effective in my mind than high intensity cardio. You're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. If you like what you see and you're watching us on YouTube, click the subscribe button below and make sure you never miss any of our videos, any of our segments, any of our interview shows. We move on now to BB50+. Plus. Dave, this show is worse than a contest prep. How often and for how long should a fairly hard training natural guy take off from the gym? I've heard anything from one week every three weeks to two days every 26 weeks. What is the passionate Palumbo perspective? You know, (laughs) there's no mathematical formulas for this stuff, guys. Um, There's got to be a little bit of instinct and then there's got to be a little bit of planning. I only recommend that people train five days a week with weights. That means you're going to get two days a week off, whether you want to take them together or interspersed. That's how I worked my most of my career. Um, After a show, sometimes I would take – I never lasted a whole week. I would take four or five days off from the gym uh, just to let my body recover. If for some reason I was completely exhausted and I was run down, maybe I wasn't sleeping, I might take two, three days off in a row every once in a blue moon. But to me, as long as you're taking your two days off regularly per week, okay, and and at some point in my career I was doing – uh, I was doing three days off every eight days. Um, I felt that that was enough to recuperate. But everyone's different. So I don't. I think for a natural guy, it's the same thing. You know, If you're taking two days a week off and you're only training five days a week, I think that that's more than adequate rest. You know, And if you feel really run down because maybe you're doing a lot of cardio too, take an extra day off here and there. I don't think it, re- it requires you to take a week or two weeks. Because to me, one week turns into one month, which turns into five months, which turns into a whole year. So, uh, you know... Take your days off, but don't overdo it. Let's go to our Twitter questions. Again, if you want to tweet your questions, just tweet using the hashtag AskDave. We go to Zach Parks, two-part question. Dave, can you please explain the formula of a ketogenic diet? Granted, carbs are a variable, but for protein, those fats for, uh, per pound. And then second, actually answer that first because the next question is about uh, smart certification. Mm-hmm. I like to do about a gram and a half of protein per pound. So for a 200-pound man, you're looking at 300 grams of protein for the day. For men, I like to do anywhere from half a gram to three-quarters of a gram of fat per pound. So you're looking, once again, at a uh, 200-pound man, you're looking at anywhere from 100 to 125, 30 grams of fat per day. And uh, for a woman... Same thing with the one and a half grams of protein per pound, but then I like to do a uh, definitely no more than a half a gram of fat per pound. So for a 150-pound woman, she'd get 75 grams of fat. Um, I don't, you know, the carbs obviously would be whatever's indirectly in the food is fine, but I wouldn't add any extra starchy carbs. That's how the ketogenic diet works with a cheat meal once a week. And then his second part was... What are the credentials of your SMART certif- certificate? I get asked all the time because of the name. Um, I've been, I wrote the SMART certification course in 1997. might have been 96. And I've been giving it since then. I gave it at uh, Dowling College on Long Island for many years. Uh, then when I got too busy, I just put it online. Uh, every once in a while, I'll teach a course. I, I think two years ago, Chris Aceto and I taught one of the SMART classes. But it's always available online to take. And people always ask me about you know, what the uh, you know, accreditations are for the course. A lot of the, uh, the existing courses out there, you will accept SMART as continuing education credits. Um, I don't have national recognition because the process is like $40,000, and it's a very long application fee. And I just don't have the time to do it, and I really don't want to spend the money. But the course has been out there. It's pro- I believe it's the most relevant course to becoming a personal trainer, meaning that after you take the course and you read the book, you'll actually learn knowledge that's relevant to what you're going to do in the gym. Uh, whereas most of the personal training certifications out there, they're like taking like a science class in college. Yeah, they, there's a lot of good information, but it's not very applicable to being a personal trainer in the gym. And that's why I wrote the course. So if you're looking for knowledge and you're looking for something that's going to help you be a better trainer, it's a great course. Let's go now to the livestream.com live chat box questions and go to Joe Kells. 
I hate this show so much, I'd rather be chased by you and Duval in skin-tight leopard-spotted athletic wear screaming why cut back as I use Kai Green as my getaway horse and his obnoxiously long ponytail as the whip so he's able to run fast enough to escape the two of you. Anyway, how long will injectables, Master on E and Test E, stay in your system if you were given a hair follicle test? And do you think running two to four IUs of growth hormone between cycles can help maintain strength and size until you start another anabolic cycle. Thanks. Good luck with the baby. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, I don't even know if you can detect anabolic steroids in hair follicle, to be honest with you. I'm just being, I'm being told, I have no idea. I know that you can detect marijuana and like cocaine and drugs like that in the hair follicle. I never heard of a, a steroid hair follicle test. Doesn't mean it's not out there. Um, so I don't know. Now, anything that's like a long-acting um, uh, masteron or a long-acting testosterone ether, usually ester, it will usually last anywhere from you know six weeks to eight weeks in, in the system to be you know to play safe because they are long-acting. Uh, once again, the testosterone would only come up as a testosterone you know um, uh, elevated testosterone level, so that would probably come out of your system even quicker than the masteron would. Uh, so it, it, it once again, it's hard. To, I, I don't even know what the the right answer would be because I never I never really heard of anyone who got nailed for a, a hair follicle steroid test. Let's move on now to Shazad Sayu. The hi Dave. I hate your show as much as I hate shoveling snow after snowstorms. Please let us know how to take care of the liver. I'm a supplement junk, junkie. But all the supplements I was using wasn't showing me any results because I have a fatty liver and because of the. Uh, because I was 0.1 shy of being diabetic as soon as my doctor told me that. I did some research, and I detoxed my liver. My sugar level went down. I lost two inches of my belly fat, and I'm getting better results using the same supplements I was using before. Now I am two weeks off cycle. I just wanted to let everyone know so they don't flush down their hard-earned money and don't see results. I'm trying to see what the question was here. <laughs> I, sure well, I could give my answer why I, what I think is good for liver detoxification. Well, obviously, milk thistle or silymarin, which is the uh, the chemical name of uh, what the, of the active ingredient in milk thistle. I actually will use European milk thistle, which look, comes in gel caps. Believe it or not, it's not a powder. Uh, Life Extension makes it. Um, I feel that theirs is the best, and my liver function always comes back really good when I stay on that uh, European milk thistle. So you guys can check it out from uh, at lifeextension.com. Let's go now to, I love this name, and I'm probably going to butcher it, so apologies in advance. Alcibiades Malapi Nelson, or Malapi Nelson. Hi, Dave. I hate this show because Sadiq never picks my question. <laughs> there I'm you offended go. by that. Dave, when it comes to hormone replacement therapy, would it be advisable to throw in there to the usual 100 to 150 mg of test, say 50 to 75 mg of DECA? Some say it may help lubricate in the joints, but others say that DECA cannot be taken on a permanent basis, even at low dosages. Your thoughts, hatefully yours, Akinaton. You know, there's a lot of uh, rejuvenation clinics out there, including Envision Medical, which is where I send a lot of people to uh, over in Tampa, Florida, that um, give you a little bit of testosterone and a little bit of DECA. So they'll give you like a half cc of DECA, half cc of, of test, you know, which would come out to, I guess, about 100 DECA, 100 tests per week. Um, I, I, you know, like that combination almost better than 200 milligrams of testosterone because the DECA does have, you know, an anabolic effect. And when you're only using very low doses like that, the stuff works. You know, uh, I don't know if I would stay on it all the time. So you might do like maybe 8 or 10, 12 weeks of test and DECA and then go back to your regular just testosterone hormone replacement. And then you maybe then do to after maybe 8 weeks or so, do another, you know, round of 12 weeks of it. So once again, the dosage are small, so there's no toxicity there. But I think it's, you know, once again, DECA is not something your body naturally produces. So I wouldn't stay on it all the time. Uh, but the testosterone, obviously, is something that you can do all the time because that's something your body does make naturally. You're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Reminder, the best I hate this show gets nitrolyzed pre-workout available in stim-free and caffeine-infused formulas on SpeciesNutrition.com. We now go to our Instagram questions. Instagram, our handle is official underscore RxMuscle. We go to yo underscore Anthony16. Dave, I hate this show so much. I'd rather go on a ride along George Farah while having him explain to me that he can get me in shape while eating 5,000 grams of carbs. 
Are you ever going to bring back Vinny the Chin? That guy is hilarious, and it'd be awesome seeing him back on the show. You know, uh, Vinny the Chin was one of the characters we brought on the Heavy Muscle TV show, which, by the way, we're still planning the 100th episode. We haven't forgotten about it. We've been just doing a lot of contest coverage lately, so we will get to it, I promise you. We might never have another episode after that. It might be the final episode, but a lot of people have asked me to get Vinny the Chin back on. It, it, it's kind of like a split. 50% of the people love Vinny the Chin and think he's a great, funny character, and 50% tell me they never want to see him again on the show. So I have to use him sparingly uh, so that I you know, don't always piss off off the people who hate him so but he probably will i think there we're going to see him in, yeah there he is uh hitting on nicole ball um but Vinny the chin uh <laughs> it, it, i think he's hysterical but a lot of people don't like him uh probably the, the funniest episode is where he gives uh magnus the magnificent a haircut with a pair of craft scissors uh, in the sink over there in, in our uh, studio so uh we'll probably get him back for the 100th episode I, I can't imagine us not getting him we go to uh Quite a name here. It's pretty piss. Dave, what are your thoughts on the up and coming rising Jason Genova and his current conditioning? <laughs> you know, this guy, Jason Genova, you, you can't really be mad. You can't really feel bad for the guy because he really puts himself out there. And I know he's a, there's something a little, you know, different about him. Let's put it that way politely. Uh, but, you know, I, I take my hat off to the guy. He, the guy tries. He's, he's passionate about bodybuilding. And you know what? Yeah. Everyone should be allowed to, to, to be who they are. And, you know, he's not afraid to put it out there. And, and you know, I respect that. Um, let, let's face it. He's never going to win the NPC Nationals. But, you know, he's putting it on the line. He's fearless. He goes out there. He poses. And you know what? He's enjoying himself. And that's what life's all about. It's about enjoying, enjoying yourself, uh, having, doing what you're passionate about, and not caring about what other people think. And you know what? In that regard, maybe a lot of us should take a play, uh, a play page out of his playbook because he obviously is probably more or he's probably happier with his life than a lot of us are who are completely, you know, quote, normal. Let's go to Big Dawes 14. And this is a topic you haven't talked about in quite some time, but it's time to bring it back to the forefront. Dave, what are your thoughts on intra workout nutrition? John Meadows is a huge advocate. You're already laughing. A huge advocate of branch cyclic dextrin and essential amino acids and has credited much of his recent improvements to his intra workout nutrition. What is your opinion? I, I think intra workout nutrition is, is actually a very valid science, especially for endurance athletes, you know, guys who are cycling and people who are doing triathlons and people who are, you know, doing anything that requires long, you know, duration activities. Even guys who are on a football field for, you know, four hours a day or gymnasts who are working in the gym five, six hours a day. For a bodybuilder who's doing a pre-workout and a post-workout shake and is doing an hour workout, probably not going to do very much of anything. I mean, it's will it hurt? No. I'm not against intra-workout. See, a lot of people think I'm against intra-workout nutrition. I think it's, the science is definitely there. I am against people who charge a lot of money to, for you to buy a intra workout shake, making you believe you absolutely need it as a bodybuilder. That's what I'm against. Because, you know, people only have so much money to spend on supplements. And when people get bamboozled into buying an intra workout before they buy a multivitamin, multimineral, or essential fatty acid supplement, it, it bothers me inside because what's happening is they're get they're 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 not being educated properly. And I think it's people like myself, uh, John Meadows, Chris Aceto, even Hani and George and, and, and people who are considered, you know, uh, people who are knowledgeable about the sport, we have a, a, a responsibility to d disseminate accurate scientific information to the public. And that means that we should be telling people the supplements we know they should be taking, not the ones we want to sell them to make a lot of money. Will I ever sell an intra workout shake? Of course I might do it, you know, especially if I come out with an endurance line of supplements. But I would never tell anyone that that supplement is more important than the basic essentials that they need for good nutrition so that they can recover well from their workouts, they can gain muscle and lose fat at optimal, uh, I guess, levels. Let's go to, I love this name, Buzz Chillington. Dave, I hate this show so much, I'd rather let George Farah pick out all of my clothes for the rest of my life rather than watch another minute of this nonsense. My question is about muscle cramping post-workout, specifically my forearms after a back session. I've tried stretching, drinking more water, taking more electrolytes, eating more food, and massaging the muscle, but nothing helps. This also happens to my chest, but less frequently. 
Um, it's hard to, for me to you know really know why you're cramping. Most of the time, it's people are not eating enough salt. Uh, usually, it's not caused by dehydration. Sometimes, just doing a really intense workout can cause cramping after the workout. Uh, when I was back in the day, you know, using you know performance enhancing drugs, I for some reason whenever I would take IGF one, I I would cramp a lot. Um, I don't know, and I found it was probably due to a depletion of potassium, believe it or not. And when I increased my potassium intake, it, it kind of solved the problem. So I don't know what you're taking, what you're doing. It's hard for me to to break down and figure out what's going on. Uh, but a lot of times, most of the time, this cramping is due to sodium. Uh, in certain instances, like IGF one use, sometimes it's potassium. Uh, sometimes it's calcium magnesium imbalance. Uh, you'd want to really try to take a, a chelated magnesium and calcium supplement. Make sure they're both in there at the same time. V-mineralize, our species nutrition, uh, multivitamin, multimineral, is a great uh, source of calcium magnesium, especially absorbable calcium magnesium, as well as all the other electrolytes and, uh, and minerals. So it's usually mineral related, but like I said, it could be workout related, especially if you're not, you know, you know, consuming enough nutrition post-workout. Maybe if you're working out too long, that could be a problem as well. Let's go to Jose underscore S underscore world. Love the show. I always get great results from the use of insulin. Due to my schedule, I work night to make it difficult to use pre or post workout. I've heard of guys that take insulin in the morning as a part of their breakfast ritual without training. Is that a waste of time or would I get results using this method? If I hear one more person to ask me about pre-workout insulin, I'm, I'm going to shoot myself. You know what? No one should use insulin out there if you don't know what the freak you're doing, all right? It, it, I mean, why would you take insulin before you go to the gym, right before you go to the gym, when it drops blood sugar? It's ludicrous. Then you got to drink a carb drink to feed the insulin you're taking. If you want – and I, you know what people tell me? Because it gives you good pump in the gym. Well, you know what? If you took this insulin in the morning – with your food and your breakfast and you got a couple meals in with the insulin under your belt, by the time you got to the gym, you'd have a really good pump too and you wouldn't be going, you know, hypoglycemic. I mean, I don't I don't know who came up with this cockamamie pre-workout insulin stuff. I mean, it it's just downright dangerous and stupid. You know, figure out why are you taking insulin number one? Okay? You're not trying to replace your own insulin. You're trying to add to to, to the insulin that you have. Why? Number one reason is because you're taking growth hormone and it's making you insulin resistant. If you're just taking insulin because you think it's going to make you grow, guess what? You're just going to get fat and bloated. And if you think bloat and fat is bigger, then great. Knock yourself out. Use all the insulin you want. But you know what? If you want to use it smart, unless you're taking growth hormone, okay, and you have a fast metabolism, which makes it hard to gain weight, you're wasting your time taking insulin. And if, you, and if you do fit into one of those categories of taking growth hormone and have a fast metabolism and you want to try insulin, take Humulin R and take it in the morning, please. You're watching Ask Dave on rsmuscle.com, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. Take advantage of our October specials. And, of course, if you're watching on YouTube and you're not already a member, subscribe below on the subscribe button. You will get a notification for all the shows, interviews, segments that we do here on RS Muscle. We move on now to Disco Brown. Good question here. Dave, why is 212 the weight chosen for the pro bodybuilding class? Why not something like 200 pounds or 100 kg, which would equal 220? Is there a particular reason why 212 was decided? I have no idea. <laughs> it was, I really know. It originally started at 210. Then they thought it was too high and they went down to 202. And then they thought it was too low, so they went back to two. So they went to two twelve. I don't know why they didn't go back to two ten. So I, I couldn't tell you. It's so arbitrary that I have no idea, to be honest with you, why they came to the, the, the conclusion of two twelve. I then I heard they wanted to raise it for a while, but then they said, "Well, we don't want to raise it too much." So I don't know. To be honest with you, it could be anything. Uh, you know, you could make it two eighteen or two fifteen. Uh, I think it's very arbitrary, and I think that they felt that the two hundred two was too low and. And a lot of it, we, they weren't getting as good a uh, level of competition, and they didn't want to go much higher than 212. I, I thought they were going to go back to 210, but uh, 212 sounds good, right? It's a nice even number, 212. <laughs> I don't know. We have time for one more question, and this one from BP Farms. I hate this show so much. I'm literally going to slap the shit out of myself for even bothering to ask this question. All right, Dave, I'm curious how you feel 
about high fat, high protein diets in relation to building muscle. A lot of people say you need carbs to get big. I've just recently replaced almost all of my carbs with fat and I'm feeling fuller and I feel better. Seems odd because it goes against the idea that carbs keep you full. I'm almost, I almost feel like carbs will make me flatter. Just curious your take on this. Could I have insulin sensitivity issues? Protein and fat build muscle. Bottom line, what are the muscle cells made of? They're made of protein and fat. The fatty acids being the essential fatty acids that are in the cell membrane, the protein being the internal components of the cell. Carbs do not build muscle, okay? Carbs are a fuel source. Like gasoline in your car, as long as you have a little bit, you'll, you'll, the body will run. And that's really the, the bottom line here. So you don't need an excessive amount of carbohydrates to build muscle. Why do you want to take carbohydrates at all? A lot of people say, well, if you don't need carbohydrates to build muscle, why not just eat a lot of protein and fat? Because pr fat, carbs are a very efficient fuel source. And it's the only fuel source the body can use while weight training. So if you go into the gym and you have very little carbs in your system, okay, your body might have to use some of the protein and fat for fuel. And it really can't use fat in the gym for, for weight training because that's a fast explosive movement. It, so what will invariably happen is your body will take some of the, car, the protein you're eating and turn it into carbohydrates. Now, we don't want that because we want the protein we're eating to be used for building and repairing muscle. So that's why you hear the term carb spare protein. They spare protein in the gym because in, by taking in carbs, your body will, will, won't cannibalize the muscle tissue that you're, you're, or, or the protein you're taking in to be using for fuel. So you do need some carbs. I think it's a good idea to eat some carbs in the off-season. You don't need an excessive amount, though. You'll grow better if your protein and fat are high and you're just taking just enough carbs to kind of fuel the processes for the day. Now, some people burn more carbs than others. If you're outside doing lawns or, or, you know, or shoveling snow all day, then you probably need more carbs than the person who's sitting at a desk all day, you know, not doing anything. So you have to figure that carb content out based on your activity level and your metabolism. But protein and fat is a staple. You need that for building and repairing muscle. I think we're about 37 episodes in, and this is only the second time that a question has been directed towards me. And this one from <laughs> My Alter Ego, this show is worse than forgetting what level I parked at at a Vegas hotel. Sid, this question is for you. How can you be so involved in the fitness industry, especially while working so closely with gurus <laughs> like Dave and the technician, and still not work out? I saw a recent post of you next to Big Rami, and as far as structure goes, you seem to have great potential. I'd expect Dave <laughs> would love to make you his science experiment. Is this going to be the before and after that we've been looking for, Dave? I don't know. Are you, are you willing to put I am. Work? I am totally yes. willing. Well, if we make you the new big Rami, then would that make me uh, the head of the camel crew here in New York? <laughs> well, there needs to be a New York chapter. So. That's right. And Perfect. would that make Johnny Styles <laughs> Dennis James? <laughs> I don't know. I got to figure out all the players involved. <laughs> On that note... Coming soon, Muscle Puppets is going to debut soon on rxmuscle.com. It's going to be epic. That is going to do it for this episode of Ask Dave. We're going to notify the winners via Instagram who won the Nitrolyze and the Macadamia Nut Oil. Of course, if you have any other questions, you can continue to chime in on Instagram. And we'll try to answer as many as we can. Until next week, I'm Sadiq Faruqi for Johnny Styles and Dave Palumbo. Have a good one. Great start. If my calculations are correct, it is now precisely October 21st, 2015. The future has finally arrived. Yes, it is different than we all thought. But don't worry. It just means your future hasn't been written yet. No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one.